Okay, um, for this last video on flow design, um, what I'm going to do is I am going to start to remove stuff like the roof and uh, probably this wall, this curtain wall right here, just to start to see, um, you know, so we can start to see inside the building and how wind may affect, you know, cooling off certain spaces and how it would have flow through. And for this one, I'm just going to bring in just the building itself. Um, I don't want to bring in the site. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide the site. Another thing you can do is you can just select everything, filter. Check none. I just want the topography. And find. So now I just have my building. I'm going to take the roof off, so I'm going to hide that as well. And then this curtain wall I'm going to hide. And I'll hide the door too. Um, so now we have a model. This was just a random wall that I put on the inside that's attached to the roof, so that's why it has that weird shape to it. So now I have a model uh, that's um, open, and you know what? I'm actually going to put a clear wall on the other wall. And I'll hide that. And this is something um, that you guys may not know, but if you have an actual wall, and then you draw a curtain wall, within that actual wall, Revit knows to cut the curtain wall out. So you can see this is the wall that I just put in, and I can stretch it um, that way, or I can tell it to be a certain height based on the floor and its top constraint. You know, if it's attached to the second floor, and its base constraint is the first floor, Well, you know, and then I can do like a top wall set, you know, if I wanted to, or I could just stretch it. Um, but the point of that is Revit knows to cut this curtain wall out of this big wall. So instead of trying to get, you know, you know, a wall from here to here, and then a wall from this point to this point, and then a wall on top, you can just do one big wall, and then have the curtain wall in there, and Revit knows to cut this out. I'm going to hide this wall as well. Actually, on this one, what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to leave the wall there, but I'm actually just going to remove the panels. Um, since this is probably the better, you know, this would be the more better, um, probably efficient way, or not efficient, I'd say probably more correct way um, to do it. So you still at least have the mullions in there. And this is obviously something, you know, this would be more for like a lubricant system. You know, if there was a lubricant system here um, to allow wind to actually pass through the, you know, the curtain wall system instead of actually having glass there. Obviously glass, even if it's glass, wind's not going to be passing through it unless it's an operable window. And you can see here I'm cycling one through to actually find what I want. If you just hit tab, and if you hover over an area and then hit tab, it cycles through um, all the components in that area. And I'm going to hide that. So now I have just the mullions and the blank. I left the ones up on top in, say it's a spandrel panel or something that's solid. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create some of these windows I'm just going to click on these and I'm going to hide those I'm just going to say those are operable windows and, you know maybe these are stationary windows that are just there to let light in but these are operable to actually allow wind to come through and I think that should be good enough for this test so now I'm going to go back to my add-ins tab, export this as an STL, 
see. Call it test. And now I am going to open slow design. Import my test. So now I have just my builder. And you can see that it's cut. You know, the cuts came through. And however, you, whatever version you were in the last time you had Flow open, that's what's going to come open the next time. So when I last had this, I was in simu you know 3D simulation mode with surface pressure turned off and flow lines and stuff like that. Um, so that's how it open, you know, from the last time that you, you know, whatever the last time was that you were in, so you can start to see, so with the roof off, I can start to see inside my building, and how everything's going to be affected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top view, and I'm going to rotate it, actually, you know what, so I can see the actual windows, I'm going to stay like this, and then I'm going to rotate it, uh, so the wind will come straight into one of these windows. Obviously, I'm doing it just for an effect, um, for effect, so we can actually see the wind coming through. Uh, but you would want to rotate it so it's an actual in orientation with the prevailing uh, prevailing winds of the site. So now you know. So something like this would be a good cross breeze to see how a cross breeze would work. And I'm going to my settings. I'm going to bring this countdown. It went down so it doesn't drag down on me. Speed for now. And then I'm actually going to switch to plane for this moment. And then uh, the last I, the other thing I didn't mention is when you're in plane, you have two options between vectors. And shaded um, so if you are ever using if you like to use play you can start to tell um, what the difference is so a plane is good plane is nice for um, the opening so now I can start to see you know with that opening you know what the wind is doing around it so the wind is going above over the roof and it's coming through um, the opening you know, it's coming in through the opening, and I'm still hitting the wall on that side, so it's it's not completely going through. Um, but now as I move over, you can start to see how the wind is, is coming out um, the other end. Um, and obviously, for, for this purpose, I took the roof off uh, so I could see inside, and I can start to see, you know, what this is doing and how everything's doing on the inside. But you would probably want the roof on still, so you can start to see the effect of the wind coming up around it. I mean, it still has it here a little bit, just because of the size of the walls. Um, but there could be some drag that are pulling the wind back in, so you want to negate that by having um, the roof still on. So the best bet would probably be actually taking the floor off, um, so you can see inside through underneath, so you could rotate you know, down and see it. But obviously, if you have multiple floors, you'd have to take off each floor um, for each different level. But again, this is just a quick, you know, these are studies. Um, so if there are, if there is a little bit of negative pressure, you know, created by the roof being open instead of an actual roof on there, probably not too big of a deal. But if I switch back to um, floor lines. You can start to see my head. Um, I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the box. So I'm going to bring this box all the way over and I'm going to bring it so it's down. So now we start to see how the wind is acting. And it's hard to see, so I'm going to lower this, 
speed. I'll lower it down a little bit. This length is fine. I'm going to check my wind tunnel speed. Switch that. I think the uh, one thing to check is how I mentioned it comes into the previous settings um, for this stuff. Um, you know, for the mode and the settings that you may have had for the lines or particles or anything like that. Um, but one thing to watch out for is it may switch back to the default velocity. So we said 15 feet per second is 10 miles an hour. So I'm going to go back to that. Where before it was back, it went back to the 32. So now I can start to see how the wind's behaving. So you can you can see this one. You see how it's coming in and then coming out because it's open. Obviously, that wouldn't happen in real life. If there's a roof, it would come in and then kind of do something, you know, with inside the building. So that's why you would probably want the roof back on. So it's when it come in and then go out. And again, that's created because of the pressure. You know, there's more pressure outside, so it wants to come out faster. You know, just you know, like there's different pressures being created around the building, so that's what's drawing the wind out. So it wants to get out the fastest way, and since the roof is open, it's coming up like that because this is pulling it and dragging it out. But this is just this is just in the, you know an overall sense to give you an idea of how you can start to get it to work and remove certain aspects of your building to start to, start to um, test flow through it. Um, if you wanted to use wind to help cool certain spaces, and you can even see on these, these are the ones that I removed the windows from. Uh, so certain times you can start to see stuff actually flowing through the windows. Let me bring the count back up. So now you can start to see stuff, a little bit more going on in here, how it's flowing through. And it actually looks like it's letting me kind of get inside the building, um, even though there's a wall in the back that's behind me. Um, so I would try. I would actually bring in a building with a roof on it, everything still in it, and see if you can actually get inside the building. You know, if you zoom in close enough, and if it'll actually show you inside, but you know, maybe just windows removed. Like I said, the floor would probably be the best bet, and then you could just zoom up and in. And see if you can get in that way and start to look at flows and, and everything like that. You know, see how stuff is starting to act. But again, uh, here, since I turned up the count, you can actually start to see everything wants to go out, you know, up and out, where there's some stuff that are coming through the other side. Um, but just as an overall sense, this is how you can start to manipulate your model, export it, and start to test different flow patterns. In different ways, oh, in different ways, everything's gonna flow. Why the box? When this box stretches, it's supposed to. It's not supposed to run. I mean, you can see how it's. This one it's fixing where, you know, if I pet it, it's not there, but it's, they're not supposed to. If I have the back part, Track back to here, it's supposed to end right there, it's not supposed to continue to flow. Not too big of a deal. And you can start to see the effect of how the wind's coming up over your building and what it's doing back here and all the crazy shapes that it's taken. Um, you know, what it's doing to it there. Obviously, um, you know, there's a lot more wind hit in it than when I had it in the site model because a lot of the site was protecting the building um, from the wind. Um, so you just want to be careful of that if you're testing it. You know, if you bring in just this model alone, what at the site, you know, there could be different circumstances of how the wind's actually working if the site was in. And uh, I think that's pretty much it for the wind analysis and how to use flow design. Um, again, obviously, you know, if there's ever questions or certain things that you want to test, we can look at it, you know, by you know team or individual basis, and you know start to explore more.